Okay, so we created a template or whatever you use for your lesson plans. You want to be aware of what the big idea is for each unit and you want to incorporate that into some of your conversations with the students. So if you have a digital lesson plan template like we used, we're just going to copy and paste that directly into it so that we don't have to write it over and over. Um, I learned that from Brianne. I'm a little bit more old school, so I used to print my templates and keep it in three ring binders, but she showed me how she organizes all hers digitally, which I think most of you would probably prefer, and I think I'd use that method now as well. Especially since I have this, I can just copy and paste things over now that I have these documents to teach from. So we have the big idea for the unit. We've looked at our unit uh, learning targets. We've read all of them, and we've decided which ones we're going to teach. And we decided that this essential question works with our first lesson. So we're just going to copy that over into our template. So within the math blocks, you can see that this was our digital template for our lesson plan for the day. We put over the big idea and we brought over the essential question. Those are already written for you. The next thing we decided, we had to decide which, which learning targets were we going to teach from. So back on our unit, our curriculum plan, we decided that these two targets from our curriculum were, would go well together and that we were going to teach to these and that it was a good starting place for the kids um, for our first math lesson. We got that right from the curriculum document. So we're going to drop down to unit one and you can see that right here is where I was getting that from. Those are the first two learning targets. You can also come over in here and note that these learning targets go with a progression that is not very important. The one star signifies that these are one to two days that you spend on these learning targets. That you don't hang out here for the full 15 day unit. That these are, are just basic building blocks. You're going to teach those, but you can come back to them over and over as you are working through the three star standards, which are more critical and which most of your time should be spent on. But we needed to start at a low level and that's definitely going to be our place value. The end result of this unit is being able to add and subtract fluently for third grade students. Now, once we've decided what our essential question was, what targets we were gonna hit in this lesson, we went back to the unit and we looked inside the red section. Inside the red section of every unit is our prior learning. The prior learning for these standards, since this is third grade, would come from grades K1 and 2. What should they be able to do when they walk into your room? So a good idea to know how much they've mastered and where the students are at is before I start teaching to incorporate some of the prior learning, you know, the foundation into my cue set, into my do now activity, what's going to kick off my lesson. I want to attach that prior learning for the students. And here we created um, some riddles that would be slightly more engaging than say, you know, just a straight out worksheet or a problem on the board. Oops, I'm sorry. So we initially started with having um, one set for the kids we want the students to interact, so we're going to give them some time to pair share. And then we wanted to get some volunteers to create their own riddles to take something that is kind of low level and create some engagement and some student interest by letting them become partners in what you're doing that day. The other thing that we took from the unit, that the curriculum that was already written for you, is the vocabulary. What vocabulary matches these learning targets that you're identifying are in this lesson? And then how are you going to teach that vocabulary? So we have put in um, the Y model, which is just a revised version of what a lot of language arts teachers use called the Freyer model. And it just takes out some of the writing. You're still going to start by putting the word, and then you're going to create a pictorial example and a non-example of your vocabulary. And this is just um, a way to quickly and efficiently teach math vocabulary and to be deliberate about it, but not necessarily overly verbal. This, I found, helps a lot of um, the special needs students. And in math, it's really important 
to give the representation pictorially, but then what is it not? Sometimes that gets mixed up for kids in math. So from that point, we've got our vocabulary, we've got our cue set, which is attached to our prior knowledge, and we've got our learning outcomes. Where are we heading with this lesson? And we did what all good teachers do. We just started to look for ways to make it engaging. We found some Learn Zillion slides that help, help, help us to get the, the message across that also included modeling. We wanted to make sure they had some time to manipulate and to play with and make visual representations of the math whenever possible. And we set up an independent practice, which we did find out online. It didn't entirely meet our needs, so a, an easy way to make sure you're hitting everything you need is just to add some verbal directions to, to stretch it for the students, um, to make sure that you have something readily made, but that it hits exactly what you want, as opposed to just settling. And it's a, it's a nice time saver. So, I mean, that's, that's basically it. Let me go back to, that's our first lesson. Let me go back to the math curriculum. So from our math curriculum, we got at the very top of this, we were able to pull out our big idea already done for us, our essential questions, our standards are blocked out and linked. We know we should spend about 15 days we go down to the unit, we read all of the learning targets within the unit to start with so we know where we're heading. Um, we look at the importance of the standards of those targets we're going to start with and we know that we don't, this is not a place we're going to spend a lot of time so we're going to get this started. And then what we do here, and this is in every single unit and I really like this piece, is we've taken all of these learning targets and we've created or started to create a resource bank. This is in every single unit in every grade level K to 8. So we've created a table where we've pulled over all of the learning targets and we've started to build some teaching resources. This first column is our places where it can help you with your decide how you're going to create instruction. We're going to be filling in things to help us model math. What kind of activities can we do? And you can see this one was used as our cue set. Um, and we just tweaked it just a little bit to use it at a lower level. And we use that idea to help our lesson. And eventually there'll be journal prompts in different places and error analysis in different places. Things that you can use to help build up your lesson plans. One thing that wasn't there that we did use, we used this Learn Zillion link to help us teach this learning target. That wasn't already there. Brianne and I found this lesson um, because we, we still needed something and we didn't feel like we had a good lesson. So we, we went searching on the internet. We found this Learn Zillion lesson complete with teacher notes and teacher slides so you wouldn't have to create your own. And then we just very quickly linked it right in here. It just took a couple seconds. We just typed in the letters and highlighted the letters, went up to the link, dropped in um, the link from the, the website, hit apply, and now it's there for anyone who comes after us or for us again next year as we're doing some of our lesson plans. It's very quick, very easy, um, and a nice way to collaborate. At the bottom of all these learning targets for Unit 1 is where you will find your performance task that you will give at the end of each unit. This is just one place to find your performance tasks. So it's on the, again, where was I? I'm at the very bottom of the unit one learning resource. Another place to find the performance tasks that will be the, the highest score on the report card would be under report card learning outcomes. And this would only apply to grades K through four. So they're also linked here. These are the statements that are on the report card. And this is that first one um, that you'll be reporting on from Unit 1. It's the computation standard. And that will get you to your final product on the performance task. It includes a rubric, a scoring rubric that you'll use, and then what you'll give the students at the end of your unit.
for an assessment piece. That's just one, that's one assessment piece. You're going to be creating your own as you go. Little checks for understanding along the way. That will, you'll have autonomy on that. I'm trying to get back to where I was at. Too many tabs open. Story of my life here. Okay. So I'm going to go. So Brian and I, after creating the template, we created two lessons. And then we were looking, where would we go next? We ran out of time as we were working together last week. And we, we actually, in our two lessons, we hit these uh, four learning targets, okay, within two lessons. And then we were looking at the next two. Now, we've spent two days already. And again, over here, these are one star standards, and there's three of them. So we want to spend one to two days on one star standards. So really, you're looking at a maximum of six days here of instruction. But I also want you to not necessarily consider, hey, I need to go straight down a row. I need to go all the way in order here. And that, that isn't necessarily what you need to do. The next, the computation and algebraic thinking progression has students starting to add and subtract um, with and without regrouping. And you see in the prior learning that they already should have a good understanding of, of this content. So you shouldn't have to spend a ton of time on it. A way to stretch this and to blend the two progressions, what we decided our third lesson would be, was that we would move on to where we were regrouping. We were adding, subtracting, and then we were going to be regrouping in our third lesson. That's not written, so you won't, don't look for it. You won't find it there. But we were going to include this learning target, but we are going to go back up, and at the end of adding and subtracting each time, we are going to have the kids decide and, and have them round. So we're going to have them round their sums and their differences, and we're going to teach the rounding while we're teaching the addition. And we're going to use that to emphasize the mathematical practice where students have to determ determine the reasonableness of their solution. This then will blend... Um, the importance and rounding now isn't isolated. Rounding is something that we do to determine the appropriateness of our answers where we have to be defending reasonableness in, um, in our writing and in our real world problem solving. So by doing that and using that we're starting to hit multiple targets within the computation strand as well. And that's going to take some practice learning how to blend the two together. You just, what you'll need to do is just kind of really just look at both places and see what can blend. And if you have any trouble with that and that's not a strength of yours, I'd be more than happy to sit down and, and help plan some lessons and, and through conversations uh, work out ways to help you see places that you can blend the math instruction to make your lessons stronger and more relevant. Because practice makes perfect, and you can do that. You will get better each and every time.